And welcome to The Three Wise Men. This is episode number two from WOSN. I'm Danny Holbrook. I'm joined today by Miles Holiday to my left, Dave Bowen to my right. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Danny, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? We get to talk about sports, especially football this season. Absolutely, Dave. Yeah, it's how's great it? to, yeah. You've been traveling everywhere. I've been traveling, but it's <laughs> great to be back here in Northwest Ohio and get back into the flow of high school sports. Really excited. Absolutely. Guys, I'm going to run down the show sheet, tell you what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get to the best thing we saw all week. Each of us saw a lot of things this week. I can't wait to share mine with you guys. And then we're going to have an interview with Shawnee volleyball coach Brooke Hutchins, bringing us a great event this weekend. I can't wait to talk to her. We're going to preview the WOSN high school football schedule. we got some great games. We'll all be out and about this weekend. We're going to talk about the Buckeyes, guys. They open up this weekend with the Akron Zips. We're also going to talk about the defenseless receiver rule. I know yeah. Miles is fired up about that. <laughs> I sure am. And then we're going to give our Power 5, Top 5 football team. Sound like a good plan, fellas? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. All right. Miles, the best thing you saw last week for podcast number two. Yeah, so I was at uh, Ottawa Glandorf for the football game um, last week against uh, Liberty Benton. Liberty Benton did a great job um, playing really good football. OG lost that one 34-6, but the best thing I saw wasn't on the football field. It was actually in the stands, the OG student section. You know, Coldwater had a, a loss uh, uh, last week. Cal Winning uh, passed away, uh, but uh, uh, the OG people were just absolutely class, pure class. They all wore orange. They were orange nice. in support of Coldwater and Cal Winning. I, I just was overwhelmed at the, the ability, you know, not, not close ties with Coldwater, but yet still someone lo- that they lost in the community for football. And they took that extra step to make Coldwater know that, you know, we're not next door neighbors, but we still care about you guys and we understand what's going on. I thought that was a total class move by, by Ottawa Glendorf. That's fantastic. That's a really good school district. They, yep. do the, they do it right over there, don't they? they, they it, yeah. was, it was really touching, and every single student, all in orange. Dave, I know you traveled a little bit last week. You've probably seen a lot more than Miles and I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have seen two high school volleyball games, and it was just really neat to be back in the gym. I saw Crestview and Paulding, and then Liberty Center and Wayne Trace, and just the girls getting after it and being aggressive again and, and getting things kicked off here in the fall. is a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I was in New York City uh, last week uh, on vacation a little bit and had the opportunity to go to... Yankee Stadium, historic Yankee Stadium, nice. and watch the Guardians play uh, the Yankees on Thursday afternoon. Unfortunately, Is the that Guardians. Your first time at Yankee Stadium? Second, time. second time. I saw I've them play against the Reds wow. back in 2017. And uh, yeah, second time. The opportunity presented itself, and my wife and I went, and uh, Aaron Judge, he hit another home run. It seems like every game he hits one out, and it was impressive, and he's just not built like other baseball no, he's, players. No, he's not. No. No. Now, now, Dave, um, I do want to point out, if you are a Reds or a Guardians fan, you don't want Dave at your games, do you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dave, you saw the Reds get no yeah. hit, right? Yes, I was at the no-hitter uh, a couple weeks ago uh, where the Reds were no hit, and then the Yankees throw a one-hitter at the Guardians last Thursday. Now, both times we had a lot of fun. The, the Two weeks ago, it was our 2014 state uh, basketball championship really cool. team reunion at Crestview, and we went down to Cincinnati, and we stayed at my son-in-law's house, the whole team. Oh, that's great. Uh, my daughter came up up home to stay away from all of us, and that was a good move, but uh, <laughs> we had a great time, and then uh, obviously uh, being in New York City and, and going to uh, Yankee Stadium and, and watching the Guardians and the Yankees, that was a real treat. Are you know, there any other teams that you want to put a kibosh on? <laughs> Anyone that you want to stop their momentum? Yeah, yeah I do. The Kansas City Royals, because right, you know right. they're competing with the, the Guardians. I, I'm a Reds fan, but I'm an Ohio fan. I'd like to see the Guardians do well, especially since the Reds are sure. out of it, um, and yeah, here come here come the Kansas City Royals, and you've heard the McCoy name at Crestview. The four uh, girls that sure. have played, the youngest one, Haley, is a uh, sophomore or junior. Can't think off the top of my head what she is. Uh, real quick, uh, I believe she's a junior. But anyway. Um, their dad, Bill McCoy, is a huge Kansas City fan. And I, I love Bill. He's a former player, former student. But, man, he razzes us every chance he can get. So, yeah. Dave, before I get to my what I thought was the best of the weekend, I want to circle back to what Miles was talking about with the OG student body. I know you've been in, uh, in administration for a long time. You're now retired. Uh, I've been teaching. Miles has been teaching. It's really hard. There's no blueprint when you have a situation where you lose a student or you have an accident with students in it. But what a class act by OG. 
total class act, and and you saw it throughout Northwest Ohio. I saw some games on WSN where they had uh, winning a number on the yeah, field, yeah, and he really wasn't cool. even at, you know wasn't a part of that at all. And that just shows the class. And you're right, there's no blueprint. Danny, and you just have to uh, have a sense of what's the right thing to do and work and communicate with each other, administration, coaching staffs, parents, families, um, and just do what's best for everybody to help that family that is going through that tragedy live minute by minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I was down at St. Mary's last weekend, got to watch the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the St. Henry Redskins. Great game, uh, 33-14 win by St. Mary's. This Closer than the score indicated, but fellas, I'm here to tell you, what I saw on the football field was unbelievable. The St. Mary's Rough Riders, are you ready for this? They rushed for 405 yards. Yikes. They ran the wing tee. You talk about it all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. You understand it a lot more than I do, right. but it's an amazing offense. Gentlemen, they ran 64 plays, and 62 of them was <laughs> rushing the ball. It was I, I looked at Mark Shine. They didn't even have the lights on the start of the fourth quarter. It was like an hour later. It was unbelievable. Why throw it if you don't need to, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So. yeah, and I watched your broadcast of that game, and it was outstanding at your call. But you're right. Uh, St. Mary's, it's the prototypical, here's what's coming, stop us. Here's what's come and stop us. It's like the sacrifice bunt in baseball. If we execute it, you can't do anything about it. Yeah, it was very, very impressive. Fellas, now we're going to take a chance to move a different direction, talk about a different sport here. I'm going to turn this over to Miles. Miles uh, has known uh, Coach Hutchins for a while now. He's had, uh, She's been on the show. Um, we've talked to her several we've had times. had her out of bounds and several times. the program they got going week, this weekend is outstanding. Take it away, Miles. Well, I'm sure all of us are going to have a ton of questions for you, Coach. Um, the event that you have Saturday night, yeah, absolutely incredible. JV starting at 6.30, then the varsity after it. Outside volleyball, playing at the football stadium. Tell us, how did this whole thing come about and why this came about? Because to me, it's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Well, I think, you know, we had talked about it a lot back when Nebraska volleyball kind of brought their indoor, outdoor and sold out crowds. But it wasn't really didn't come to fruition until probably just a couple weeks ago, believe it or not. We had um, to add another match. And Brian Swaldo, who's our athletic trainer at Shawnee, he said, you know, was staying up to speed on like the Newark Catholic. They did something similar Mm -hmm. in the summer, did the preview and scrimmage. Um, He said, you really need to bring this to Shawnee and to our community. But I don't think he was anticipating it this season. So it was semi, I guess, maybe a little bit of a last minute type let's see if this will fly and the athletic department kind of rallied around and here we are is it one of those things because all all of us have coached right Mm -hmm. and you go in and you sit down with your ad and you say i got an idea now stay with me here Mm -hmm. right (laughs) stay with me it was it how how was received when you came up with the idea well i kind of walked into the athletic director assistant and i said you know, is Mr. Owens here? I, I have an idea. He he might like it. I think he's probably going to like it if we had a little more time to plan. But sure. I, I want to, you know, see if we could hap- have it happen this season. So he's like, oh, that's not good. I turn his corner and he just was, he said, I'll see what we can do. You know, if we can get our hands on the court, that's not an easy thing. Um, if we can, you know, gain some support in the community in terms of sponsors and those sure. types of things, if we can logistically make it happen and schools have the open date, you know, we'll see what we can do. Now, I'm sure the, the ladies on the team are like, this is a great idea. Coach, can we do it? Can we do it? Right. They had mm-hmm. to be excited. How has the response been by every the parents, the, the student body, how, how the community, how have they responded? Awesome. I mean, I think the girls now know me well enough to know I get these ideas and those creative wheels <laughs> kind of get to spinning and they're just like she's really you know she's really going to go after this so I think just bringing you know both Shawnee's community Spencerville's community I think a lot of other athletes in our building are going to really support and rally around I think it'll be a really really cool thing for them to experience now t- how tough was it to find an opponent was it one of those they, they pick up the phone and they, they say oh I love this idea uh, or they're kind of wishy-washy about it yeah I mean 
uh, not necessarily probably wishy-washy, but how is this going to happen? Right. You know, a lot of people are like, well, what if, what if it rains, you know, we'll bring it inside. Um, what if you, you can't get officials? It's, it's pretty much last couple weeks until we're anticipating this event. But, um, now everybody's just like, wow, this is really happening. This yeah. is super cool. And coach, I've talked to the officials. In fact, Jack texted me the other night yes. and said, Hey, are you guys covering this? And I go, we are covering it. Yes. We're covering it on the radio. We're covering it on the TV. I said, we got it covered. Coach, it's called Sets and Spikes at Sundown. I think yes. that's a cool name. Yes. It sure is. Um, so it starts uh, August Saturday, August 31st, 6.30 JV match, 7.30 varsity match. But guys, you know this? They have a live DJ there. They have a yes. concession stand, and they're doing a 50-50. It's a party out on the football field, but it's volleyball style. Absolutely. I love it, Coach. Yes. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. I mean, we. I just think, you know, the passion that I have for the game and trying to transfer that and just, you know, spill it out into the community is just – it's it's hard to contain. So that's just the biggest thing that I'm trying to, you know, portray with this event. Yeah, coach, I think it's great. Women's sports promoting that at the high school level. You're going to have a great crowd. May get swallowed up by the stadium a little bit, but that's okay. Right. Um, and it's Saturday night. I will tell you, I was an athletic director for 15 years and I quietly pushed. I couldn't get anywhere with mm -hmm. it. I'm like, why are we not playing volleyball on Saturday right. night in the fall? Mm. Right. Uh, Title nine, all that good stuff. I, I wanted to see that happen, but it, I just couldn't get it to, to move forward. The other thing is, I got to ask you this question. Any of the girls on the, on the team say, hey, we don't need a floor. Let's just put some sand down. Right, right. Let's play a little in beach fact, volleyball. we have a little sand. We have a couple sand courts okay. back there, but we wanted to make it as, as official as, you know, as we could. And, you know, so that was the biggest thing. I mean, I, I know it's kind of a outlandish thought, but, you know, exactly the Saturday night play, um, highlighting female sports. I just I think it's going to be an awesome event. Are you guys going to get an opportunity to practice on that floor beforehand? Well, we're going to try. I mean, we have there are a couple of other there are football games in the morning. Right. So just getting the assembly of the court is going to be, time will be sure. a huge factor. So probably seasoned people, it would maybe take an hour, but we're putting it together. Um, we have a lot of videos and just a lot of FaceTime calls with the folks at Newark Catholic. So I think probably a couple of hours, if we can get it done in time, mm -hmm. they'll get an opportunity, our squads, to just kind of do a little bit of a run through. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about the floor. It's a sport floor. What, does that, what does that mean? It's a sport court. So I think we discussed a little bit before um, a lot of girls that play an out-of-season travel right. uh, schedule, a national schedule, have played at convention centers on those sport courts, and it's just a portable court. Um, it's pieced together. Um, it's not wood, is it? It's, it's not that plastic, wood. It's right? All, yeah, it's some type of, almost like a plastic. I'm not yeah. totally... A composite yeah. of some type, yeah, but yeah. Um, but it's approved for play. It is Absolutely. approved for play. Yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. So most of the girls are accustomed to playing on these courts, just not a typical court through you know week play or regular season play. Uh, take me to that moment. You're about ready to, to start the match. You're going to look around, right? What's going to be going through your head at that moment? Um. I can't believe we're actually doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Coach, how awesome is it to have an administration that believes in your idea? Like, like you just, like you said, you went into his office and you have this crazy idea. Can we pull this off? He doesn't know about it, but it happens. I mean, yeah. I, I've coached a lot of years and to have that administration that believes in what you're trying to do, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't think, I, I think every solid program, good program, you know, you can only go so far if you don't get, you know, the ad administrators rallied around you. And they, in my, you know, I, they really do support. And I don't feel a lot of resistance. They're, they're supporting along the way, you know, providing what if those scenarios at times being, you know, a little bit of the devil's advocate, but I think they have um, to, they have to be, I've always said this, <clears throat> and I know just because Dave said, it, I've always said this, 
the Crestview community, they do things the right way because everybody's on the same page, not only athletically, but academically too. Right. Discipline, everything's the same right. and they do it the right way. And that's what I'm seeing with your program. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't coincidental that you guys were just awesome last year. You're no. going to be awesome this year. I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, there's an element of culture shift, I think, with any, you know, change in leadership. But I think ultimately... Mr. Owens and the admin, the athletic department, you know, they recognize that at, at the heart of what I'm trying to do and push is just just a true love and passion for the game and trying to spill that over into the community and, and get, you know, folks as excited about the game as I am while developing student athletes, I think is just... I don't think you can really match that. And coach, you could have always contacted me. I've played golf with Steve Owens a couple of times. And <laughs> if you needed some, you know, right, just some, some help. Yeah, I could I'll know it now from my I, next. Yes, <laughs> I could tell Steve some stories about Steve on the golf She's course. The so we can hold that over him. Black <laughs> man sure, at its sure. finest. She's the Shawnee volleyball coach, Brooke Hutchins. It's Saturday night, August 31st, JV at 6.30, varsity at 7.30. It sets spikes at sundown. It's on the football field at Shawnee High School. Coach, thanks so much for taking time to spend with us this evening absolutely thank you for having good me luck, coach. thank you yeah good luck today's episode is brought to you by ultimate outdoor bring resort style living to your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space by ultimate outdoor automated pergolas retractable walls screens outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens Layfeld industrial supplies and welding supplies has everything you need to do the job from tools and accessories to gases we're truly a one-stop solution center for every contractor and welder for getting the job done. Not only do we carry the supplies you need, we can deliver them too fast and accurate. See us today at our locations in Greenville and Coldwater. Also, Tom All. Car shopping is different at Tom All. We want to take care of you after the sale because at Tom All, the friendship of our customers and our employees is our number one goal. That's why we have the greatest staff in the business and dedicated to giving you a knock-your-socks-off experience. And finally, Kewpie. Escape the summer heat with a frozen treat from Kewpie. Enjoy a frosted malt, soft-serve frozen yogurt, frozen cappuccino, or a refreshing lemonade slush. Whatever your taste buds desire, Kewpie has the treat for a hot summer day. Get yours today at Kewpie East, West, or Downtown. Welcome back into the Three Wise Men podcast here on WOSN. Amy Holbrook, Dave Bowen, Miles Holiday, and we welcome into the round table one Nate Garlock, our WSN compadre. How you doing, Nate? I'm, well, I'm a little confused to start. Uh, you're always confused. Well, the title of it is Three Wise Men. Yes. I joined after the three of you. So what is so what it's, I clearly know who the three wise men are. No, no. What no. does that make me in this chair it's, currently? It's three wise men and the JV. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Nice low we'll blow. <laughs> nice low blow. I like it. I like it. <laughs> we always have to emphasize, though, it's three wise men, question yes. mark. Question mark. No question, question mark. mark. Nobody knows it's if we're wise or That's fair. That's fair. The, 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 the How did they rope in. you into this juvenile, yeah. <laughs> juvenile conversation, Dave? You are so much more highbrow than the rest of us. Well, I, I listened to the first podcast, and I texted both of them and said, that was high octane. And they yeah. said, you want to join us? Let's roll, baby. <laughs> Let's roll. That's right. Mm -hmm. Guys, it is that time of the podcast, my favorite time, where we're going to highlight the WOSN matchups this weekend in high school football, and we've got some dandies, guys. Let's start out. Kenton at Ottawa Glendorf, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday on the call. This one will air Saturday at 9 a.m. on WTLW. Miles, you've got this one. Uh, we have this one. Randy and I saw uh, OG a week ago. Too many turnovers against Liberty Benton. Now, I'm here to tell you, Liberty Benton is for real. That is a heck of a football team. They're going to be extremely good all year long, so watch out for those guys. Uh, OG is going to have to stop turning the football over, right? And they're going to have to run the ball if they're going to have any success against it. Everybody knows, Kenton, what can they do? They can always score points sure. right especially with a dual threat Corbin Johnson you know 3,000 yards passing last year almost a thousand yards rushing he is unbelievable however Kenton gave up 216 yards rushing a game last year there is your formula for OG to win this football game right control the clock run the football I did like Peyton Kuhlman their quarterback he has the ability to uh, hide the ball a little quarterback sure. read action, keep it and go. That's the best thing that OG did offensively. Now, I will say this. OG has to make a stand because look at the schedule. Wapak, Elida, St. Mary's, they got to get a win or else things get really snowballing in the wrong direction for OG. Nate, Ottawa Glandorf, 
Last week, Liberty Benton. This week, Ken. I can't think of two worse or two better offenses that you have to prepare for for the first two weeks coming out of summer camp. I feel bad for the OG kids because those are two high octane offenses. Yeah, it was a tough draw, and you know they they didn't have a great year last year. They only they only won the one game. You know, trying to build off of that, yeah. and you, you don't. It doesn't get easy when you have to start that way. You don't. You have to almost be perfect on night one, and that's a hard thing to do for. Programs who are trying to you know rebuild or make corrections from you know a down season. There were some good things like uh, Miles said. You know, uh, Coleman did a nice job. Uh, Dane Dooling, um, he pretty much caught most of those passes. He had 81 yards receiving and a touchdown for, for OG. They have pieces there. And listen, when you have Coach Schreiner, he's been around yeah, forever. Right. He knows, he knows how to coach That's football. A great point. He'll, he's only two wins uh, away yeah. from you know that magic number. Um, 200. 200. And you know. I'm sure he's chomping at the bit. You know the kids know about it as well, and that gives that little bit of extra juice. And it, I think that this is really a very good sneaky matchup in the Western Buckeye League because you're talking about a Kenton team that, you know, great offense, very prolific. They are going to throw the ball. You know what you're going to get. You know, Miles talked about, you know, hey, let's run the ball and grind it, but that's not what they do. They, I don't know that they can do that. With no, their, no. They, they, yeah, they, they like yeah, to throw the football. Yeah, it's yeah. like the old Houston Cougars offense. Even when they were up 35 nothing, they were still going to throw yeah, the that, ball that is because what, that's what they do. Yeah, that's how yeah. they eat clock. They right. throw the ball. Yeah. They do all those things. So, um, you know, Ottawa Glandorf is going to have to figure out how to – get in win a shootout and you know i don't know if they're built for that so it'll be interesting i think it should be a good matchup dave you, you look at this matchup and kenton we know what they're going to do they're yes. going to throw every time and, and i think he had a great point when he said this is a sneaky matchup you look at kenton's team last year not the greatest record corbin johnson was hurt quite a bit last year he's a really good quarterback when that offense is clicking they can put a lot of points up and that's what you think about when you think about kenton that they're going to sling it around so my question miles can og Make this a fit fi- fist fight in a yeah, phone booth. Right, it has to be. Has yeah, to, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they got to go that they, direction. They, they have to run the football, shorten the clock, keep that Kenton offense off the field by running the football. Remember, Kenton, 216 yards gave up rushing a year ago. That's what they have to do now. They do have a really nice offensive line. OG does. They're going to have to win the battle of the line of scrimmage. Vinny Brinkman's going to have to get vertical running the football. Peyton Kuhlman. Um, I think that's your formula, right? Run the ball, be physical. That's how you beat Cutting. Again, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday on the call. That'll air Saturday night, 9 a.m., WTLW. Next game, guys, Shawnee at Elida. You take a look at the Shawnee Indians. A huge win over Lima Central Catholic last week. They're not going to apologize for that win. Anytime they can beat their crosstown rivals, they're going to take advantage of that. They're going into Elida. Guys, this is an Elida team that I have just outside of my top five. Really, really good in my opinion. Aren't we supposed to say, are you kidding me? (laughs) Aren't we supposed to? Are you kidding me, Are you kidding me? (laughs) That was a great call, Nate. Great call. Listen, that that was everything a Danny Holbrook call should be. (laughs) (laughs) Miles, your take on this uh, crosstown shootout? Yeah, everybody's really high on Shawnee, right? They got the big win last week, a game that Nate did. I think ball security is going to absolutely be important for them, right? We talked to Shane Wireman earlier in the week, and he said that, right? We have to take care of the football. If they take care of the football, they're going to stay in this game because I'm here to tell you, if they don't, this Elida team, they are explosive. Amari washed two touchdowns a week ago. Magoo hit him on stride, and he just strode into the end zone. And they got Parker Krim, the Krim Reaper on the defensive side. If you don't block him, watch out. Elida could win this one going away if they don't take care of the football. Shawnee has to take care of the ball. And, and you know that Elida won 40 to nothing last week. My question, guys, is do you see, like last year, this was a 13 to 9, you know, fist fight again. Uh, do you see it as being a low-scoring game, or do you see it being in the 30s? Well, so that's what I was I was going to say, Dave. You know, I have this game for WSN on, on Friday, and I'm excited to call this one. But I think a lot of people forget that there there was no offense last year. This was mm-hmm. a a back and forth defensive battle yeah, where the point. where the difference was David Ed scoring. David yeah, Edscorn really is the yeah. one that took that game over, and is the reason that. Elida won. Shawnee was a drop touchdown pass away from winning that one ultimately. So and last last year in week one, Elida took care of Toledo Rogers as well. No, no, no shade to Toledo Rogers, right. but you know, that's not it's not the greatest measuring stick for that Elida sure. Bulldog team that's to know exactly point. where they are right now. Coming into last year's game, it was the same thing. Elida put up a bunch of points week one. We know that Ryan Magoo is a really good quarterback. 
the kid has unfortunately had to deal with some injuries. When he is healthy, he he is phenomenal. He's one of the best quarterbacks in this area. And as really and good. as he goes, that Elijah Bulldog team goes. They start four and zero last year. He breaks his leg in that bath game, and then you know there's a little, there's a slide there. So he is a, a difference maker. But he played that game last year. The offenses couldn't get going. David Escorn's not there to pick that up. Who's going to step up and lead one of those teams to victory? If you're Shawnee on the other side of that ball, you talked about that big win against LCC. Are you going to be that the I can tell you from living in a house with a Shawnee <laughs> football player, yeah. the the weight that was lifted off of that team's shoulders Absolutely. after sure. an 0-10 sure. season, you have a new coach, a new system, you know, everybody knows what Coach Wyron was able to do at Waynesville Goshen, but there's always that is it is it going to translate yeah. question, mm-hmm. right? We get that win. Now there's like Okay, well, can we get back up now? Now there's no, well, Shawnee's hasn't won a game in two years. It's We won a game. Now can we carry that over? Are they going to be able to take that momentum that they have, put that into this week of play, which this isn't the greatest week for high school football and practices because everybody's getting black flagged. They have to adjust. It's too hot. You know, you don't get your normal week of practice for these teams. You know, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's a real yeah. it's a real challenge for Shane Wireman because everybody wants to say how good you are now, right? Yeah. Exactly. Everybody's exactly. saying in that locker room, and the kids start to believe, it. oh, we're really good, right? Oh, we'll we'll, we'll destroy Elida. Well, let me ask the table this: Let's say Shawnee comes out on fire, and they get let's say go up fourteen nothing. Hypothetical. You got to believe that Elida's sitting over there going, "Man, alive! Maybe this, maybe Coach Wireman's got something." You know, and the and then. Consequently, you got to believe the Shawnee kids who have worked their tails off all summer, who bought into everything, who get the win over LCC. Guys, we're rolling now. It could it could really be monumental for the Indians. Yeah, you always talk about your growth from week one to week two, especially in football compared to other sports. And I think that's a situation here with LCC. If or excuse me, uh, Shawnee, if yes. they get things rolling, it'll be good. It'll be real good for them. But gosh darn it, they've they've had a lot of people really compliment them and how the, those kids and how they yeah. perform this week. That first time you get hit on Friday night, sometimes it's like, oh, I guess we're playing football again. Well, I can tell you this much. I, I You know, as Miles so eloquently reminded everybody, I had that call on yeah. for WOSN. Uh, and, uh, you know, it didn't start off great. You know, Shawnee went Correct. out, first two offensive possessions, turnovers right away. A year ago, that Indians team loses that game. They, they showed a lot of resiliency. I think ultimately this game on Friday night between these two teams are going to come down to two players. It's going to be Parker Krim for Elida, Absolutely. the Division One prospect who is just a man-child. And, a, I mean, he, he, he is so good. I think so he's the good. best defensive player in the and, area. And, and yeah. underrated in the yeah. sense that not a lot of people know who he is or how Agreed. good he is, which is, which is just baffling to me. And I think it's J.J. Spiker, the quarterback for Shawnee. I like him. He, he had 22 carries for 159 yards, I believe, was the final number. He was scrambling all night. He was rolling. He was keeping plays alive. He had an 89-yard touchdown run on a broken play with Parker Krim wreaking havoc and Shawnee probably going to have to figure out a way to double team him there could be a lot of traffic in that backfield if he can continue to extend plays like he did against LCC it's a game changer but if they get back and he can't get free you know it's gonna be a long night for the Indians Shane Wireman gave him a great compliment when we talked to him he said he is the ultimate competitor so anytime you have your quarterback that is your ultimate competitor you got a really good chance to win one last thing Danny yeah if I am Elida and I'm a smart coach like Kyle Harmon he's a very good coach I'm taking yeah. the Krim Reaper and I am moving him to different oh, yeah. spots you have it, to make yeah. them very difficult to defend that's yep. a great point Shawnee and Elida our own Nate Garlock and John Zerby on the call that will replay Friday 10 p.m. on WTLW guys no church in session for this next game <laughs> of St. John's Lima Central Catholic maybe one of the best Catholic rivalries in all of Northwest Ohio these two schools don't like each other and I'm jesting they, they do but uh, on the athletic field they get after it Delph St. John's a huge win last week over a good Sydney Layman team that was a trophy game we talked about that. Kind of cool. And then uh, LCC loses to uh, Shawnee. You know the LCC kids want to get that feeling out of their mouth. Bad taste. Let's talk about this one, Miles. Well, I think LCC, you, you kind of reevaluate what you did in week one, right? Maybe we threw the ball a little too much. Maybe we didn't get the ball to Matthew Quatman a little too much. Look, if you're not getting the ball to Matthew Quatman 20-plus times, I really think you're living life wrong on the offensive side. You, who'd you return? You returned all the big guys up front, right? I think this is a game where you get back to running the football, get Quatman the football. However, 
you're going to have a tough time doing that. This is a really good Delphi St. John's team. They scored 54 points last week, and they're led by one of the a really good quarterback, under, underrated guy in Boggs. I think this guy's fantastic. It's going to be a tough matchup for LCC. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think so too. I'm glad that this game has started to come back around. They took a, a break for a while, uh, and this has been, um, especially since LCC was independent, this has been more of a regular game for them. And it's a great matchup between you know two two really good programs, and you know. I think that ultimately, when you look at that LCC team and everything you said, Miles, well, I think you nailed all of it. When you look, you, you, you have to get Matthew Quatman more Absolutely. involved. You have to. Brady Parker, he looked good in flashes. There was times where he looked like he was a complete but control he's but he's of that offense. Yeah. Yeah. But he can throw he, the go ball. But he's he's a sophomore. Yep. And I think it was unrealistic for people to think that he was going to step in as a sophomore on his first start on a Thursday night in a big rivalry game and was going to be looking like this season polished quarterback. We saw that at times, but he's going to be okay. I promise you yeah, he'll be that good. he'll be good. But they have to get back to who they are. They 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 like to run the ball. The, the line on both sides looked good for most of the night last week. I think that they can do that. They're, the defensively, they're going to have a challenge though. You know, TJ uh, TJ Wirtz is a great runner for that St. John's team. Yes, and he you know he had a big yardage against Lehman last week. He can do pretty much just about anything that that Blue Jay team wants. And you know, I was a little surprised. I mean, I know Sidney Lehman's not quite the team that we've used to them being in the past, but I, I was a little surprised based off of last year's season to see St. John's go down there and put up those points that they did. And I tell you what, if that's the St. John's team that we're going to get back and Coach Schulte's found, you know, the fix, whew, it could be, that could be a good one. Dave, you're on the call for this game. I am on the call uh, with Patrick they're, they're, Kamler. They're, yeah, you and Patrick Kamler, there's, this could be a shootout. I mean, look. LCC, as I said, they want to get back to their winning ways. They're not used to losing that opener. This is going to be a good game. Yeah, you have two pieces of motivation for the T-Birds. First of all, they lost in week one to Shawnee. Secondly, they lost this game last year, and they were in control of it for the majority of the game. Nate, I think you had the call did, last yeah. year. Um, and St. John's, they, they stole it at the end. Let's call spade a spade, and and they just kept fighting. It, it's going to be a Donnybrook. It's going to be a fun one. I am really, really excited to see these, these two teams get after it. Delta St. John's at LCC. Patrick Kamler, Dave Bowen on the call. That'll replay Friday night, 10 o'clock on WTLW. Gentlemen, Salina and St. Mary's, myself and big Darren Gilbert are on the call for this one. Guys, I said it earlier, this St. Mary's team, unbelievable. As good a week one performance, Miles, as I've ever seen. 64 plays, 62 on the ground. Now look, Salina, in their own right, they scored 50 last week. Nice young quarterback. I had Bobby Morris last year. He's athletic. He can get out of the pocket. He's really good when the play breaks down. I'm telling you, this this is a big rivalry. Nobody knows who the lake belongs to. They're, that's what they're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. they're fighting over the lake. Yes. Uh, you might want to warn. no green algae. <laughs> you, might, <laughs> you might want to warn the good people of St. Mary's that Gilly's coming with you. What, whatever's in that press box will be eaten by Darren Gilbert. I guarantee that. Hmm. Uh, Danny, I'm always re reminded by what John Cooper used to say for Ohio State. I, I try oh, to forget no. a lot about John Cooper, yes. but he always said win the surest way right yeah. and when you have a, a, a vaunted running game like St. Mary's they threw only twice last year or last week why throw ever right it, when you can run for over 400 yards there is nothing more demoralizing on that other sideline I've been that defensive coordinator where no matter what I have called they are still getting four to six to eight to ten yards and by the end of the game you're just hoping that this game's going to get over that's what that St. Mary's offense can do you called it a three-headed monster in your it broadcast is, last yeah. week these three guys they are absolutely fantastic Fantastic. The run game for St. Mary's is a scary, scary thing. Yeah, Nate, they run that wing T. And I, look, I don't know a lot about the wing T. Miles and I talk about it every once in a while. But to prepare for that in week one, it's like preparing for Army or Navy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I think that you saw in week one the jump that the St. Mary's team has taken. You know, because a year ago, it's not like the offense from St. Mary's has changed, right? They, this no, is what they've right. done for years <laughs> right, and years right. and years and years. But somehow St. Henry came out week one last year and held them to 71 yards rushing. Made them 17 nothing. I mean, it, yeah. it was incredible. That I, I don't even know when the last time that possibly could have happened to a St. Mary's team to rush for under 100 yards. And, you know, that sent St. Mary's on an 0-4 start, including week two against Salina last week, where I think a lot of people are like, oh, this will be the bounce back. St. Mary's will be back. Nobody knew about Salina yet, right? And, you know, and then they come out and all of a sudden Salina is the darling of the WBL and St. Mary's goes down 0-2 and, and all these things. 
I had a lot of questions about Salina coming into this one. They graduated a ton. so mm-hmm. much talent. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you you graduate the offensive and defensive player of the year from your squad. People are going to be looking at you going, how are you going to be able to come back from that? Now, I don't know much about South out of Columbus. You know, I know that they, they won and beat them big last year as well. Um, so I'm not sure the strength of that program. But if – People were concerned about Salina. They put some of those questions to bed last week because they went down there and they took care of that. Now, I personally think that St. Mary's is on a revenge tour. Exactly. I think I think that Coach Bo Fry, he we know what that Fry family is made of, oh. and I know Bo a little bit from some time I spent over coaching track over in St. Mary's. Losing's not in that family's vocabulary, and to go zero and four. That did not sit well with anybody, no, and not. they are coming out firing. Yeah, Dave, look, he is so right when he says that, that St. Henry held them under 100 last year. They sent a clear message to the rest of, of the state Friday night when they put up 405 rushing yards. I've never, never seen as impressive that, and they never stopped. They would mm-hmm. get two yards, they'd get four yards, they'd hit one for eight yards. It was as impressive as I've ever seen. Yeah, and then in the quotes in the paper the next day, the players were talking about on in January, the weight room. It was all about 0-4, oh, 0-4, oh, oh, 0 oh, 4 That's how we started. We're not going to do that again. And revenge to her, Nate, you've nailed it right there. I think St. Mary's has a purpose like none other, and everybody better watch w- out. Would everybody at this table agree that it is a two-man race, Wapakoneta, St. Mary's for the WBL title? Yeah, I mean... Favorites, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, 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 I personally... Away from anybody else. I, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's St. Mary's. I think when, you know, they're running like the, like they can run, you return, you know, two, two guys who rush one for 1,400 yards, one for 1,200 yards. When that's who you got coming back, and that's where you're starting, plus you give all that extra five they yeah. clearly figured it out towards the end of last year. I, I mean, I know that Wapak is also very talented, but I'm telling you, I, if, if anybody touches St. Mary's this year, I'll be surprised. And, and, you know, real quick, Salina, they have the culture going right now. I'm, I'm really – I had Van Wert Salina last year, and Van Wert was supposed to, on paper, win that game. Absolutely. Salina yeah. comes into Edgar yeah. Stadium and yeah. takes it, and, and they're really doing a great job. They get the win in week one here. They're going to battle, and it's going to be a fun one, but – I agree with uh, St. St. Mary's. Wow. Formula for Salina, though. Brandon Batter did a great job as a head football coach there. Bobby Morris, big play after big play, right? I like him. They I like have, him a lot. have to get an early lead. If they are chasing and the ground game is just chewing up, watch out. Corbin Lehman, the linebacker, he's going to have to have a Chris Spielman-like game against Iowa. 20-plus sure. tackles to stop that running game for, for St. Mary's. Salina at St. Mary's. The Golden Voice, Danny Holbrook and Darren Gilbert <laughs> on the call Saturday night, 7 o'clock, WOSC. <laughs> Who decided he that. reads the copies around here? <laughs> I, know. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, listen, we already have to deal with the Danny Holbrook <laughs> show during the week. You, it also gets to be Nick, this Nick one. Nick handed me the copy. I mean, come on. But you went with imitation as the greatest <laughs> yeah. film of I was watching the game today, and I hear, are you kidding me? Are you kidding and I'm me? like, is that Nate or is that Danny? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, our final game to preview. Uh, at the beginning of the, or at the beginning of last week, we all looked at this match and we thought, "Oh my goodness, Janias Hall, the Lima Senior offense, Ryan Montgomery, the Finley offense," and we get some terrible news out of Finley High School. Ryan Montgomery, the University of Georgia commit, is out for the season. Just a tragic situation. Uh, we wish him the best. Our prayers are out to him and his family. Uh, but nonetheless, they got to play football and they've got to play against a Lima Senior team that has got it cranked up and running that spread offense. I look for this to be a really good game. I look for Lima Senior or excuse me, I look for Finley to still bring it. I don't think they're going to change their offense a whole lot. Your thoughts, Miles? Yeah, Riley Kirkos is going to be the starter at quarterback. He's a sophomore. They like him. He, they are high on him. Now, is he Ryan Montgomery? Of course not, right? You've only had two quarterbacks like that in school history, right? Bren Roethlisberger won, and of course, Ryan Montgomery. Kirkos is a smart kid. Now, the real MVP this week for Finley is going to be Matt Best and Steven Adams, the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Do not go into the same game plan like you have with a Ryan Montgomery. Taylor, make what you do that can Riley Kirkos do right eliminate some things that he doesn't do well sit him down see which throws do you like what are the pass plays that you feel comfortable with and then make sure you protect him right because if you go five wide and you say all right young fella you're going to get hit some tonight that makes for a real timid quarterback so those guys are going to have to be the real mvps on that offensive side 
Taylor may make sure that Riley Kirkos can get things done for them. Yeah, Nate, you look at this matchup, and the Lima senior coaching staff, they've got a pretty big job here because obviously when the number one player on the opposition is out, there's, there's, there's relatively a little bit of a letdown maybe in high school kids. they got to do a job of saying, look, this is still the Finley Trojans. This is still our big rivalry. Yeah, I mean, I think Kirkos did a nice job coming in. He, he was a sophomore. He never played any varsity at all. I'm sure he had absolutely zero intent of playing this year. He, right. he knows yeah. who he's playing behind. And, yeah. and, you know. So then all of a sudden, the first drive of the first game of the season, Montgomery goes down for the season with that ACL tear, and then it's, hey, kid, go in there against the defending two-time state champions and try to keep <laughs> us in this Watch one. Out. But I'll tell you what, the, he played well, and he had some good throws, and I mean, you know, that game was... It was what it was. I mean, it's it's it was it was a rough game. Slip TCC is just really a, good. Yeah, I, I think you give them week of practice. You're the guy. This is what you got to do, especially with the offense that Finley runs. I mean, Lima Senior has to watch out. They had a great game against Piqua, and what I liked about that game was if you had a chance to watch it, they have changed some things up. Last year they were just strictly spread, throw it out. Janias Hall with you know video game like numbers. They ran the ball this week, fellas. Yeah. They, they they lined it up in the backfield. They handed it off. They showed a different wrinkle. Broke out the wishbone. That's right. They are not. Wow. They are not just a you know running or a throwing team anymore. They they can do some other things. And Coach Lawrence made it a point to, to be unpredictable this season. And I think he felt like that hindered them at times last year. Now, what I'll tell you about all of this is ultimately Riley Montgomery plays offense. He doesn't play defense. Right now, Lima Senior's in a six-game losing streak to Finley. In those games, they've been outscored 226 to yeah, 31. Right. Yep. Yeah, great point. They haven't scored in two years. Ryan Montgomery has nothing to do with that. Lima Senior, even with that offense, has to find a way to put points on the board. Now, I have a ton of faith in Coach Lawrence. I think he's doing a great job with that program. I, I, I think the second year with these kids buying into it, even though they have graduated some receivers, some guys stepped up last week. Boog Wilson had a phenomenal game for them. They have other guys that are long, they're fast, they can run it now. I would be, I would be shocked if Lima Senior isn't able to go in there and play with any. I don't know if they'll win that one, but I, I think they can go in there and play. I think they can put some points up, and I think they can shock some people with the game they give Finley. And Nate, talk to me about Boog Wilson, one of the best names in the area, right? He's yeah. a guy that is going to have to run the football really well for them to win, right? Yeah, and he, he decided to add that wrinkle. You know, He had 12 carries for 81 yards and a touchdown last week, but he's been primarily a receiver, and he also caught seven balls for 102 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Great night. You can put him anywhere that you want. He, he, he can hurt you anywhere he wants. They've added new wrinkles with guys. Uh, they got a they got a young man, Keon Smith, who made two one-handed snags that, I mean, they weren't just like, oh, it's here, I'll take it. I mean, he, this kid had to get up. It was on his fingertips, pulled it in. Got One was a touchdown grab. One was for another first down. There's athletes all over the field for Lima Senior. Boog Wilson, the senior, does a, a lot of things for that team. You know, but ultimately, they're going to have to find a way to protect Janias Hall. If they can do that and they can give those receivers some time to get open, Lima Senior is going to be okay. But if that line can't stop Finley, watch out. Mm -hmm. Do you sense at all? Let's, let's look at Finley a little bit in the sense that, okay, we have beaten Lima Senior the last six times. They haven't scored on us the last two years. Uh, we lost our quarterback. Could they be in a little bit of a woe is see, me? See, that, that's where I'm going, fellas. And I, and I really think this. You're not losing a, a first-year left tackle who you don't know a whole lot about. You're losing the number 12 right. prospect yeah. in America. Well, that's why you're not even you're just losing, losing your quarterback, right? University you're losing of Georgia something more. The yeah. best program in the mm -hmm. country right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. This kid is, you know, after Tavian Sinclair, he's the second best player yeah. in the state of Ohio. The, I think the Stephen Adams and the Finley coaching staff have a monumental job because look, Lima seniors coming in, they're going to keep putting the pressure on you. They're changing nothing. When they score, if they get you down, they're going to come after you. And if your kids have any doubt, which I know they do because they're young men, and that's what happens. So it's a chore for the Finley coaching staff. Yeah, and I I think you're right. The only thing that I think maybe helps put some of those concerns down is it's not like Ryan Montgomery went down on Tuesday afternoon and full pack. Yeah, 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 sure. You and, got a week to prepare. Yeah. And, and he, you already have a full game under your belt with his replacement. So you got to see what he could do. Everybody got a little bit comfortable against a very difficult opponent. And now you get a full week of practice. I think that will help smooth over that transition a, a little bit for Finley. Um, 
You know, but I mean, only time's going to tell at this point. If yeah. Finley has to win the first quarter, right? If, oh yeah, absolutely. If, yeah, if yeah, Senior yeah, yeah, yeah. gets a fourteen nothing lead in that first quarter, you know, you start looking around if you're on that. Finley well, and the other line. thing too is you start putting down, da- you start putting pressure on that young sophomore quarterback, yeah. and he has to make plays out of the pocket. Mm-hmm. And hey, this isn't what we talked about. These aren't the throws I'm comfortable with. It could snowball. Well, and here's the other little just added wrinkle, maybe a little extra motivation for Lima Senior. When you look at that Lima Senior schedule, the way that it's laid out currently, if they can find a way to beat beat Finley. I mean, you're looking at a very realistic 10 and 0 season, and they know that, and that puts a little bit of extra push into this game for them. Yeah, Lima Senior at Finley. You want to talk about an All Star team? Mark Shine, Jerry Snodgrass, two of the best in the business. That'll be Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, excuse me, 11:30 a.m. WTLW. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls, screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Layfeld Industrial Supplies and Welding Supplies has everything you need to do the job. From tools and accessories to gases, we're truly a one-stop solution center for every contractor and welder for getting the job done. Not only do we carry the supplies you need, we can deliver them too fast and accurate. See us today at our locations in Greenville and Coldwater. Also, Tom All. Car shopping is different at Tom All. We want to take care of you after the sale because at Tom All, the friendship of our customers and our employees is our number one goal. That's why we have the greatest staff in the business and dedicated to giving you a knock your socks off experience. And finally, Cupy. Escape the summer heat with a frozen treat from Cupy. Enjoy a frosted malt, soft serve frozen yogurt, frozen cappuccino, or refreshing lemonade slush. Whatever your taste buds desire, Cupy has the treat for a hot summer day. Get yours today at Cupy East, West, or Downtown. Back here on the WSN Podcast, the three wise men, Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday, Dave Bowen, and Nate Garlock joining the table. Gentlemen, it is here. It's Ohio State Buckeye opening weekend. The Akron Zips come to town. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go around the table, and we're going to talk about the score, what we think is going to happen, and we're going to talk about an offensive player we can't afford to lose and a defensive Mm. player we can't afford to lose. Look, we know we got a lot of depth on that team, but still, injuries are part of the game. Let's start with you, Miles. Uh, final score, 72 to – you ready for this? Zip. Ooh. Get it, Akron, the zip. Ah, that's so good. 72 so to funny, zip. Yeah. <laughs> zip <it. laughs> I, I really think this uh, Ohio State offense is going to absolutely explode. Um, they're going to enjoy themselves immensely. This is a much better offensive line than it was a year ago. And, of course, we know there are shiny toys absolutely everywhere <laughs> on this offense yeah, for Chip yeah. Kelly to play yeah. with. Uh, it's going to be a fun day in Columbus. I don't see Akron – really doing anything offensively this this Ohio State defense is going to be lights out yeah and who is the one player on the offensive side of the ball that you think the Buckeyes cannot afford to lose to have a successful season well we all lived through the Cotton Bowl didn't we right and when we didn't have a quarterback watch out right Will Howard has got to stay healthy um Devin Brown people say hey he's okay I saw three series in, in, in Texas. It was not fun, right? Yeah. So Devin yeah. Brown might be the backup, but I want Will Howard to take every single snap. I don't think Julian Sain is ready to play he's yet. He's not. So on offense, that, that's, that's my answer. Will Howard, he's got to stay healthy. And the other side of the ball on the defense? Uh, Caleb Downs. I, I really think he's going to be the best defensive player in the country. Jim Knowles, if I know him in his history, he loves to play chess with great parts, right? And I have a feeling Caleb Downs is going to be a safety on one down, maybe a linebacker, maybe Maybe a flat defender on another down. Maybe he's coming off on a blitz on another down. He's going to be that guy that you don't know where he's going to be at on football field, a la Troy Palomalu, like Dick LeBeau used to use him for the Steelers. They got like, this is a 50.5 spread. We had Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row on the radio show earlier this week, and he said, and he agreed with me, I don't ever remember a spread being this high. Now, Florida A&M a couple years ago was like a 48 or so, but a 50-point yeah. spread. Now, this is because Akron comes in two and ten seasons the last two years. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, no, I don't think anybody realistically is going to be like, oh, this should be a real good matchup. And we should really see. <laughs> like, like, look. It, it, ABC's going to promote it that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, however, you know, you guys, we're all avid Buckeye fans. We've watched a lot of Buckeye football. What's the one thing that Ohio State tends to do early in the season against these overmatched teams early in games? 
They start slow. They struggle. Yeah. Yeah. We, we see three and outs on first series. They're not focused. They're not ready yeah. to go. Somehow the other team manages to get a field goal or a touchdown, and all of a sudden it's sky is falling. What's going to happen now? How is this even happening? And then they figure it out, and they end up usually winning going right. away. Talent wins out. So I don't think this will be a 72 to nothing game. I, I think I, I think they probably cover, but I think they'll probably give up a score or two. I think you're probably looking at a game that's going to be right around 55, 56 to like – eight, nine, something like that. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, you know, I think they probably start off slow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw three and out to begin the game. Everybody loves Will Howard. It's time you, to make a change. Time you, to make a change. <laughs> you, you, you two already know how I feel about this yeah. whole quarterback situation and how this thing has right. played out throughout <laughs> the season and through this summer. I, I, I think that there will be a little bit – and here's what a lot of people aren't talking about, right? It's the best roster money can buy in college football, right? That's what everybody likes to say. How much pressure is on? These kids all know that it is championship or bust. Right. That's all they've been hearing. And they, they know what the expectation is. And when you put that expectation on kids, sometimes it doesn't always start off the best. They have to go out and be able to be like, oh, okay, we can relax. We can just play. We are this good instead of pressing and trying to show everybody that they're that good. Got to find your rhythm. Yep. Yeah, yep. You're an offensive yep. player. We can't afford to lose. Um, I, I mean, it's I, I hate to take it, but it's got to be Will Howard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's enough depth pretty much everywhere else, including that offensive line, where I think injuries can be taken care of. They can be handled. I don't think it'll be, oh, here goes the whole season because we lose this one guy. The receiver room is as deep as it could possibly be. Boy, We're it? starting a freshman out there who might be the best receiver on that team To I mean, by the time the year's over. I think ultimately it's going to be Will Howard. We got two running backs who are, are really good, who you can change in and out. So I, I think ultimately it, it'll be the quarterback position. Um, Will Howard has to be better than he was at Kansas State, and he's got to show that he deserves to be a high-caliber Division One Ohio State quarterback, and he's got to stay healthy. On the defensive side of the ball? So I'm going to go a little bit off here. This might be a little people. controversial. Maybe, maybe. That's what we're here about. I think it's Jack Sawyer. <laughs> Oh, and let me Jason. and let me yeah. tell you why. Yeah. And I think it's because there's going to be so much attention put on JT on the other side. That's a good point. That it is going to allow Jack Sawyer, who's gotten so much better over the last two years, to wreak all sorts of hack, havoc. We lose him, and now all of a sudden you're not as worried about what's coming off of that edge, and all of your focus can be on JT. All yeah. of a sudden that defense doesn't get home as much in the backfield. Yeah, you can slide to protection to yeah. stop JT. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Dave, fifty point five spread, huge advantage for the Buckeyes opening weekend. This shouldn't be a contest, should it? It should not be a contest. Uh, this is the kind of game that when I'm offered tickets, I'm like, I don't want to go because it should be a blowout. And if it's close, I don't want to be there. <laughs> um, that's how it works <laughs> out. That's exactly that's how I think. Think. Yeah. <laughs> so I have 60 to 7. 60 to 7. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have. Ted Ginn plays, you know, where he catches the ball the first three times and scores three touchdowns. I agree with what Nate has said as far as the Buckeyes typically start a little slow. Uh, and with, with the heat, we'll see how that plays out. Um, they'll wear Akron down, if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, and you're an offensive player that we can't afford to lose. I don't have a sexy pick here because I, okay. I, yeah. I knew you were going to ask me last. Yeah. And I knew these guys were going to say quarterback. <laughs> and I agree with that. So my pick is not a sexy pick, but it's very important. What, what was one of the major problems we had last year on the offensive side of the ball with one of the guys that touches it every single play? The center. Yeah. yeah. We had some bad snaps. Yeah. I don't want to lose Seth McLaughlin. Right. Yeah. Right. No. I do not want to lose. He had a bad him. Rose Bowl. He had a real bad Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. I mean, I think he's I'm got. I think he's got some questions. He's got to answer. To yeah. It wasn't yeah. Matt Jones against. Uh, no. No. But Missouri I'm just, bad. I'm just saying he had a bad Rose Bowl. Guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he is, you know, a transfer from Alabama, yeah. and he's earned that opportunity. And I hope that he comes in and steadies that offensive line. And I don't know behind him on the depth chart. There's a sophomore and then a freshman. So I, I want that to be consistent. I don't want to think about. The, the snap back to the quarterback at all this year like we did last that's year at times. Point. So that's my offensive Your defensive guy. pick, Dave? I stayed with Miles with Caleb Downs. In addition to everything Miles said, I think that Caleb Downs, your corners and, and everybody else back there, they're going to be able to, to be a little more aggressive mm -hmm. because you've got him. Yeah. And uh, I've heard coming out of Ohio State, he is just the best athlete on that defense. And uh, he's a sophomore, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Also didn't yeah. have the greatest Rose Bowl. 
Yeah, he no, he didn't. You're mm-hmm. right. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, gentlemen, I, I think uh, this one, this one's kind of got me puzzled. I, I, with everybody coming back on the defensive side of the ball, I think it's the best defense we've had in the last ten years. I don't think that's anything to argue about. I think Jim Knowles has finally got his system in place after this is year three. Um, I think this is going to be an absolute blowout. I've got sixty-five to seven, and I say that I think they'll score a touchdown late in the game when one of our freshmen blow a coverage or just doesn't understand the assignment because it is game day in Columbus and so I think that's going to happen my, my offensive player I agree with you guys is Will Howard I saw that quarterback room at last year in the Cotton Bowl and is absolutely miserable I, I'm not real sure about Devin Brown this is his third year and he hasn't beat anybody out for the position and they brought him in as a five star and they said they stole him from USC and I, I'm not doubting the kid I'm sure he's got talent but I don't think his game's adjusting to what needs to be done if Ryan Day thought it would you know Kyle McCord had minus six yards rushing last year and Devin Brown didn't see the field I right. mean that's all you need to know right mm-hmm. if, if Devin Brown was the guy why'd they go get Will Howard exactly right. so exactly. that tells you right there what's the, and the I staff's think, confidence and I think Will Howard's going to be fine I really do uh, nine touchdowns on the ground last year uh, he led him to a big 12 championship I think the kids got moxie I think he's going to adjust well to Ryan Day's system I think they're going to coach him up and let's just hope he doesn't get hurt and uh, you know he doesn't have to be it, it's cliche he doesn't have to be that great really he doesn't with that you know those tailbacks and those receivers just be adequate and I yeah. think you'd be alright and on the defensive side of the ball I absolutely love this guy he takes away one side of the field, and it's Denzel Burke. If you lose yeah, Denzel yeah. Burke, fellas, you're bringing a freshman in to replace him. Right. And not, the, Our freshmen are talented, but Denzel Burke is a four-year starter. Yeah. This cat started as a freshman. He's going to be a first-round pick. All he's got to do is stay healthy. He can lock you down. He is as good a corner as we've had since Sean Springs. Yeah. I, I love yeah, the kid. Yeah, yeah, I really right. do. Let's All right. go, bro. Guys, every year the football changes rules, right? And the game has to adapt. Uh, one rule that is uh, filtered its way down from the NFL to college to now in high school is the defenseless receiver rule. Uh, I saw it, first saw it two weeks ago in a scrimmage, and I couldn't believe that I saw it because, to me, it was a clean hit. Um, it was a bad pass, uh, led the receiver to a bad spot, and a safety just did what you're supposed to. You hit the guy, and the flag was thrown. I saw it again last week week uh, same situation Liberty Benton threw a post route it was a high throw the safety broke on a ball shoulder pad into the rib cage defenseless receiver Liberty Benton then went on to score instead of having to punt that time your thoughts on the defenseless receiver rule in high school football Nate we'll start with you yeah I mean you know obviously I got a little bit more insight into this only because we had this exact same thing happen at the LCC Shawnee game it was a big point of contention a lot of people unfamiliar that the rule has even made its way into high school Right. Um, and, you know, that causes some confusion. You're also at the high school level. We're not all there. They're not all mic'd up. So all of a sudden you see a flag drop and everybody's like, that was a football play. Oh, and they're all guessing at this point what a, what mm-hmm. the penalty is. Um, I did. F- I, I'm not even sure how I knew, uh, but I remember reading. It. I knew that defenseless receiver was in. I knew that's what it was. I'm OK with it in the sense that it has to be consistent. If what whatever rule, whether you agree with it, or not agree with it, it has to be enforced consistently and it has to be a point of emphasis that play in particular, because a lot of times you're going to have it's high school. You're going to have a lot of quarterbacks lead balls high. They're going to lead balls out. Right. They're going to hang their wide receivers out to dry yes. a lot. Coaches have to know that the officials are now going to be calling this so they can teach the proper technique because you can still hit them. You can. you can still tackle them. It has to be hands. You have to wrap. It can't be the shoulder to the hip. The hit, the hit at LCC, it was a clean hit two years ago. It's a great hit. It's a great play. Sh- shoulder went into hip, flipped, no catch. Because what do you – I mean, you have to teach the technique. Because if not, what do you expect a safety to do? Sit there and watch the receiver catch it and, and get a first down? Like, you have to be able to defend it. Is it fair for a high school defensive back – to make an adjustment that quickly, not knowing exactly where the ball is going to be supposed to be thrown. Well, I mean, we can. I'm sure that we have a time limit on this podcast where you, <laughs> where you and I can You're debate where we can debate this. But at the end of the day, Miles, I mean, you can go any rule like that. Mm. There's every rule that's in high school. You can talk about. Whether, well, is it really fair to ask this guy to not pull on the inside for a hold? Is it to not hand fight for a pi? I mean. I, I think that it's much difficult at the high school level to enforce these rules consistently and cleanly because you're not dealing with, you know, Division One college athletes, professionals, right? right. Like you, you have to have that room for air. Unfortunately, for this new rule, 
it's always going to be very obvious, right? right? And, you know, that's it's one of those things where um, I'm not going to say the exact context, right? But it's, you know, I, I may not be able to describe it, but I know it when I see it. And I think defenseless receiver falls into that category. It's a hard thing to ask safeties coming downhill to very do. Hard. It's difficult to ask coaches, you have to teach this proper technique now to be able to play through the ball. And it does feel like at times it's going to be a judgment call, and nobody likes that, especially at the no. high school level well, with even officials. Even officials don't like that. Yeah. 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 Don't you guys think so sometimes that when a safety rule is put into place, like you, you look at the new helmets that everybody's wearing for practice, nobody has any issues with that. Mm -mm. Nobody has any issues. But when it comes to a judgment call that is a safety rule, mm -hmm. it becomes – because you're right, it's, it's inconsistent. And we see guys call it one way, and it's just so hard to – you know, at live action, I feel bad for the officials sometimes. I also understand what they're trying to do. You knew this was coming down the line with the big hits and with the injuries and with the on-field issues. So, Well, and like every new rule in the OHSAA level, right, and, and Miles, you probably know this better than the rest of us, you know, it's not like there's a lot of examples that the OHSA sends out and says, Correct. here's film, this is exactly <laughs> right. what it is, and here's how yeah. you should play it, and here's how you should defend it now. And this, right. is, this is a video of the play and how we expect it to go, and here's a video of what the penalty will be now, right? Yeah. They don't do that when they make these new rules. And when they present it, it's like you're reading something that an attorney put out, right? right exactly. <laughs> and you're like, uh, yeah, yeah. what does Section 3.2 mean on this? Yeah, you go to those officials' meetings, it is mind-numbing. They never put it in layman's terms for people to understand it. Now, let me ask you this, Dave. Tom Brady always says famously, don't throw it in bad spots. Right, the defenseless receiver is not a fault of the the secondary member; it's a fault of the quarterback. How do you feel about that? Well, I agree with it, but Nate referenced earlier. You know, high school quarterbacks are not going to put the ball where it needs to be every single time, and that that's where the situation occurs. I, I agree. Consistency is going to take time because you have to live it. Um, and then everybody in the stands sees it because it's your wide receiver and the cornerback and the safety out there on an island. Yep. So everybody knows what the call should be. But if you think back, guys, what else have we done with safety? You know, keeping the head up. True. And, and that really became a point of emphasis just a few years sure. ago. I do remember being down on the sideline for some Ohio State games, and those guys were just using their bodies as missiles. Absolutely, spearing. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, man, somebody is going to get killed here. Yeah. And th they addressed that. And I think that's what they're trying to do here. They just have to work at right now. Sometimes it feels like, oh, so you want our receivers and our cornerbacks and our safeties to take their pads off and play with flags. Danny, let me ask you this question. Why are receivers given extra protection where a running back is carrying the football and a linebacker comes in, throws a shoulder pad right into the ribs. If you've carried a football in a high school football game, it is a very violent act. You don't have that protection, but why do receivers? Well, I think part of it is, is uh, uh, what I think is, you know, the, the being in open spaces, uh, being at top speed, uh, running backs sometimes when they hit the line of scrimmage aren't at top speed. So, you know, you see the violent collisions when you see a guy go across the middle. And we talk about those patterns all the time. You know, young high school kids going across the middle, they're not going <laughs> to tend to short the arms a little bit. Uh, so it, I, I, I agree with them protecting them a little bit. I understand that. Well, and, you know, I think the big difference in, you know, a running back and a, and a, and a wide receiver is a running back as they're going through that line and they're taking that hits. They at least have the ability to brace themselves and try to protect themselves. Yes, there's a ton of contact coming in, right. but they're able to to try to protect themselves, right? If you're a receiver who's trying to go up and catch a ball that is off target and you're up in the Make air, a business decision. You're, but, <laughs> but, but that's also but but that's also not what you teach your wide receivers, right? Go get the football. And let's be honest, who, who were we putting back there at safety? They're usually your best athletes, your quarterbacks, right. your wide receivers. They're receiver. playing guys, center field for guys that, that very sit back there and yep. wait, and that's what they get yep. their money with. So yep. that's a good segment, guys. All right, it's time for our power. Power five football teams in Northwest Ohio. I'm going to go around the table. You're going to give me your top five teams. It don't have to be in any order. Uh, last week, I, uh, I kind of changed the rules a little bit. I had five, then I had some honorable mention, but it was a lot of fun. So let's start with you, Miles, your power five football teams. I, I was really impressed with Liberty Benton a week ago. A leave at quarterback. Watch this young fella. He can make every single throw. I'm very impressed by him. First start is like his 30th start for them. He was outstanding. And don't forget about 
uh, Seth and Zach Elkert, man, those guys are absolute studs. This is a fun Liberty Benton team. I have Columbus Grove. Um, we, you and I saw him, Danny. Fantastic. Dudes Fantastic. absolutely everywhere. Um, this is going to be a great matchup between Grove and Benton. Uh, uh, that's going to be a great It's going to be a, a fun one for them. Uh, Wapak, St. Mary's, because – Good Lord, they can grind you up, can't they? <laughs> and, of course, uh, that little school by the name of Marion Local, that's my top five. Nate, your top five, Power Five in Northwest Ohio. Uh, for me, I'm going with Coldwater. I think the Cavaliers, I mean, it's Coldwater, right? And, right. and, and, they, and, and they, you know, they played, so they played a really good Valley View team. You yeah, know, Blockberger was fa- fantastic yeah. last week. Yeah, he, he did a great job. So Coldwater, Walpock, I think the Redskins just picked up right where they left off. You know, going, uh, playing Toledo St. John's isn't always easy. They play a tough schedule. They took it in pretty easily last week. Versailles, I think they get lost in the conversation, they right? Do, yeah. You're talking about a, a state runner-up a year ago, a good program really year good. in and year lost out. Lost to Marion Local no, by a point. Right, in that <laughs> MAC, and somehow nobody ever talks about them. They had a good win in week one as well. Uh, I'm with you, Miles. Columbus Grove, the Bulldogs. Uh, you know, I, I've been saying it, you know, for a week now. If they're going to figure out ways to be able to win with without Barraza having to be the focal point, and they every, can. everybody's in trouble. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I mean, it, I think we're all going to agree on this one, right? It's going to be Marion Local. <laughs> I mean, it, the fly, what? Yeah, the Flyers, <laughs> I mean, you know, they just continue to do what they do. It doesn't matter if they're five minutes away or if they have to get on a bus for four and a half hours. They just win big. They do. All right, Dave, I'm sure you got Crestview on the top of that pole. <laughs> no, no, I, I do not. I do not. Although I'm very, very excited about the, the Knights this year, but no, I do not. Uh, the usual suspects, Wapaw, Coldwater, Marion Local, Grove, St. Mary's. I'd like us to power rank a team that, you know, the teams that are 0-1, who are you taking at the top of that list right now? Ooh, that's a really... Because we talk about wanting premier I, matchups I would say right away. Defiance. They, they lost a really tough to one Napoleon. to Napoleon, mm-hmm. you know, for that River Rock, went in overtime, uh, going for two, don't get it. Uh, Defiance team, I really like them. I had them on the outskirts last week. Uh, don't sleep on them. If there's another team in the WBL that maybe might make that jump uh, other than St. Yeah. Mary's and Wapak, it would be them. Uh, for me, it's St. Henry. I'm telling you guys, that was a 33-14 game, but that was a close game. St. Henry, they got some athletes. Charlie Whirling is fantastic. They run him at quarterback. They run him at tailback. He had some 30-yard runs. He had some, you know, some tough runs. That's a good St. Henry team from where they were a year ago, and they won two tournament games. Yeah, For me, I think it's LCC. I mean, I think that that is a good program. Good they have call. good athletes. I think, you know, that loss um, is only going to fire them up, and we'll see what they're made of this week in St. John's. My I top have. five guys, Marion Local, the Flyers. Did you finish yours, Dave? No, you well, did not. Oh this, this is what he does yeah. Oh my God. It's fine. I Don't got worry so about caught it. up no. in it. Yeah, he turned the table and he asked us different questions. Well, <laughs> Nate and I are on this side of the table for a reason because I'm going with the T Birds as well. Scott Palty teams get better they as do. the year goes yep. on, and you got a sophomore quarterback back there that's just going to continue to grow. And I'm really excited about the Northwest Conference this year. Yeah. I, I know when we added. Uh, Fort Laramie and LCC. I'm like, yeah, on paper, it's going to make us better. But now that we're here, I'm like, wow, this conference Mm -hmm. is really, really good. Well, and you want a crazy stat before we move on? Four years in a row, LCC, we've known the success. They've made deep tournament runs. They've been a great team. Four straight years, they've started the year one and two. Exactly. They've gotten off to slow starts. Um, But then they get it rolling. So I like LCC. Any honorable mentions? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll take the (laughs) nine. Uh, yeah. God, I, mean, I, uh, I want to hear that. Yeah. I want to hear hey, that. Hey, listen, I think I, listen, the I think the offensive line yeah. played above expectations, I think, against Parkway a little bit, you know, and uh, you've got you've got uh, so much experience coming back in the skill position. So uh, it's going to be a good one this week at, with Macomb coming to Convoy. And, uh, yeah, we owe them. Yeah, I, listen, <laughs> we, I, I, we I owe said, them. We, I'm so two nights. I think they're a, I think they're a sneaky I, I pick like in that NWC. Yeah. Yeah. I really they do. do it right every time. Yeah. All right, guys. That, that Parkway <laughs> game, when was the last time Parkway won that one? Uh, it's It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, going into the Mac and taking names, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, my top five, uh, pretty uh, usual here, Marion Local. Uh, what a win. Uh, they go across state lines and they still take care of business. Cold water, enough said. Just a consistent program year in year. At St. Mary's. St. Mary's may be right up there with Marion Local. I've got Columbus Grove and Wapakoneta in my top five. And then I've got two honorable mention. I've got Bell Fountain on the outside looking in. Uh, that's a great squad with uh, obviously Tavian St. Clair, who we're going to try really hard to get him on this podcast. Mm. We've got some connections. And then I like the Elida Bulldogs. I really mm-hmm. like the Elida Bulldogs. Yeah. And we're going to get to see them Friday night. I like Ryan Magoo and you 
you said it best. If they can stay healthy, they're mm-hmm. going to make some noise. They'll, they're going to they're going to be a difference maker in the WBL as far as who wins the league because they, they're 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 that team that you know they could roll into Wapak or roll into St. Mary's with that offense and make a you know and an upset. And well, that's what they did last year, right? The yeah, one right. point the one right. point victory over Defiance. Nobody saw that one coming, and if everybody else gets an honorable mention, so do I. And so uh, yeah. I'm going with Waynesfield. Everybody keeps forgetting. All they've done is win 21 straight regular right. season games. New coach, new program, same win. Absolutely. I bet you Coach Harmon would say, why can't we win the WBL, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great point. Guys, fantastic job tonight. Thanks a lot. Uh, you guys did great. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Three uh-huh. Wise Men WSN Podcast. We'll be back next week with all the latest in high school sports from around Northwest Ohio.